So here we are back up at Saxe Waman, which is located above the city of Cusco, and we're looking at obvious megalithic remains. There's a mixture here, of course, of work done by the Inca, probably about 90%, but then we see clear evidence that the Inca discovered megalithic works done in quite hard, metamorphosed limestone. And this is a clear example of that. You see these relatively flat surfaces that have been cut into the stone, clearly done by some kind of lost ancient high technology. As the Inca were a Bronze Age culture, there is no way that many of these surfaces were done by them. They were found by them. We also see cataclysmic damage here too, where these giant stones were snapped and even flipped over. Again, more intriguing flat surfaces. And look at the cracks and breaks in the stone. It's clear that the flat surfaces were made first and then some kind of cataclysm damaged these giant stones. This is a rhyolite stone outcrop located at Sacsayhuaman and it's quite possible that this happened at the time of the ancient cataclysm about 12,000 years ago. It's a volcanic extrusion. And here again, more flat surfaces that some people regard as being quarries. But again, the Inca could not have efficiently cut this material. So it's very likely that the Inca found these megalithic sites and then turned them into places of worship and ceremonial spaces. Now here we are, we get our first view of the city of Cusco. Some people think that Cusco is a small town, but in fact, it's a population of between 500,000 and a million people. And here is where we're going to get our first view of the giant megalithic wall that the Inca found at Sacsayhuaman approximately a thousand years ago. Now, some people call this a fortress. That's actually something that the, um, the Spanish conquistadors described it as. But we do not know what the Inca used it for. And of course, we do not know what the original function was. It could have been a fortress or maybe something much more complicated. The acoustics here are really quite profound. So was it possibly made as a ceremonial center by the megalithic builders. And now we're going to see how big these stones are. Look at the people in comparison to the size of these giant stones. Again, it's metamorphosed limestone, so it's much harder than the bronze tools of the Inca. In terms of scale, some of these stones weigh 40 tons, and there are at least two, such as this one, that weigh about 120 tons. And the quarry is approximately three miles away. And we've been there, and we can see no quarry marks. Now here, once again, the sense of scale and also how tight-fitting the stones are. Any gaps that are present are earthquake damage, maybe from the time of the cataclysm, maybe from Inca times, but it's a sense of size, scale, and precision, which is absolutely profound. Now, when you see smaller stones in the upper areas, that's an indication either of Inca repair or possibly even more modern repair work. And there on the right side, upper area, you can see the smaller stones. Much of that is presumed to be Inca repair work done, somewhere between 1,000 and 500 years ago. And as we go th past these two giant megalithic blocks, have a look at the staircase. 
Notice that the stairs are made of small stones with mortar. So this is an Inca construction at the megalithic site. It appears that there were no megalithic staircases originally, which is very curious. And there again, the stairs are Inca. Smaller stones with mortar. And here we're going to see that the original megalithic builders again were working on a very profound scale. And everything is curved. You see polygonal stones and curved walls. And it also appears that they made animal designs. This seems to be a snake design that was incorporated into the construction of the wall by the original mysterious megalithic builders. Were they Atlanteans? Were they aliens? Or were they simply ancient Peruvians who had lost ancient high technology? It really looks as though whoever did this work was able to manipulate matter and make the stone soft for a very short period of time. Once again, Inca staircases, and then the profound nature of the megalithic builders. Were they able to manipulate matter in some way and temporarily make the stone go from a very hard consistency to almost marshmallow consistency? We don't have any form of technology like that, but somebody obviously did in ancient times. And now, once again, another perspective of the sense of scale and the tightness of the fit of the stone. And now we're at a location very close to Sacsayhuaman, which is called Kenko. And this again is a megalithic construction that was later adopted by the Inca. And what we're doing here is we're going into quite a long labyrinth. This could be a natural fissure that was later shaped by the megalithic builders. And there's lots of examples also that the Inca utilized this space or this area at Kenko for funerary services. This is where they mummified the high-ranking Inca people. Again, odd flat surfaces that don't make any logical sense, at least not to me. And then we walk through, and again we see flat surfaces, no evidence of tool marks. And there, in the center, is a curious knob. What is it for? And another part of the labyrinth at Kenko is where the uh, Inca did their funerary services. They did um, mummification on what we'll see as a massive polished slab. Again, they found it there. They didn't make it. But the Inca were very pragmatic people, and they would take an older construction and utilize it for their purposes. So there on the right is the shiny slab used for mummification. And now out we go. And Kenko is a massive, almost hill of one single piece of stone with lots of surfaces carved on top of it. And as we walk through the city of Cusco, you'll see how complex the stonework is. You have megalithic work, then you have Inca work, and then you have Spanish colonial. That doorway there was originally megalithic, and next to it, some Spanish colonial work, even utilizing concrete as a mortar, and then original polygonal Inca. 
and then another repaired section of wall and back to polygonal Inca again. So every street in the ancient part of Cusco is super complicated in terms of construction and timeline. And as we continue to walk, once again, you see the smaller polygonal Inca work, and then a megalithic section of almost cube-like shapes. That stone is basalt, and it was brought from a quarry more than 50 miles away. And once again, here we have Spanish colonial on top and then some Inca repair using ancient basalt stone, and then the original megalithic basalt construction. And here again, megalithic basalt on the left, Spanish repair work, really quite sloppy, and then original Inca. This is the metamorphosed limestone that is also found at Sacsayhuaman which is about one mile away. And remember the basalt quarry is 50 miles away. And this wall appears to be a reconstruction effort by the Inca utilizing the basalt that they found, the damage from, again, an ancient cataclysm. Cusco is much older than the Inca. And finally, what we're going to see is something that most people do not know about, and that is that the Inca had a glyph system. You see those squares? Those are called tokapu. So that is the glyph, glyph language of the Inca people. 